Hello guys, welcome back to Axangel RC. So here is some more strict testing for the Nano Talent, mainly because it was brought to my attention that last time around my speed may not have been high enough for these things to actually start making a difference and that sort of makes sense. So I decided to do another test before moving on to other mods where I would try to keep the speed around 50 km an hour or above and see what happens. In order to do that however, I had to make some changes in INAV and also to the CG of the plane to allow for level flight and increased speed without having to increase the throttle. As it stands now, the board alignment compensation was set to minus 10, which did give it too much of a nose up, but my idea was to gently climb up while flying a cruise and didn't really take into account that this would happen at a reduced speed. It is a minus 10 for me because my board is rotated front to back for convenience. I changed that to minus 8 to lower that nose up angle and also once at the field I moved the battery a bit further forward to again and prevent the plane from nosing up too much which should give a good boost to forward speed while holding altitude but should not require higher throttle for that. Last time around my average speed was around 35 to 40 kilometers an hour because the plane was mostly flying in high alpha with the nose pointing up more than necessary and the battery a tad more to the tail than necessary. Now though with these little changes right from the get go I definitely noticed an increase in the average speed while holding level at the same throttle position as before. Interesting result was also a decrease in the milliamp hours per kilometer indicator since I was now flying faster at the same amp draw meaning I could cover more kilometers with the same amount of energy. That on its own is pretty good news. So first flight was with the strakes on and since now I try to keep a speed of at least 50 kilometers an hour I have to say I could definitely see a difference from last time when I mostly flew at 35 to 40 kilometers an hour and that was in a good way. At an altitude of 100 meters there was still some rocking but it was a lot less pronounced and its amplitude seemed greatly diminished. I put the plane into altitude hold mode so I wouldn't have to worry about that during the test and I now actually managed to keep the speed around the 50 km an hour mark and slightly faster at times. A bit later on I climbed up to 450 meters and the plane literally felt like it was standing still at times and at times as the speed went over 60 km an hour it felt even more stable and there was no sign of rocking. After a while I landed to remove the strakes and took off again doing the same thing as last time. Sometimes spent at 400 meters and then some at 450 meters and I hope you can see this because it was very apparent while I was flying. Without the strakes it noticeably rocked a lot more. The rocking just didn't feel quite as tight and well controlled as before. It felt loose. For some reason altitude hold now refused to keep the speed of 50 km an hour or above so I flew it manually which did affect the altitude but still I could definitely tell that it was worse without the strakes. Going up to 450 meters only reinforced that feeling whereas with the strakes it felt as if it was on rails and there was barely any rocking at all. Now the rocking was very noticeable most of the time and with a much larger amplitude. That for me was the first noticeable evidence that these strakes actually do make a difference you just have to keep the speed up. I then took the plane up to 600 meters to see if that makes a difference and even though the plane calmed down noticeably it still was wobbling more at this altitude than it had been with the strakes at 450 meters. Once I've had enough testing I went down and landed but in the process managed to get the plane out to 2.2 kilometers and the XM plus receiver with its tiny antenna still had around 70% RSSI which was mighty impressive for such a small receiver and it should be able to do a lot more than that. So the next day I decided to do a new endurance run now in warmer weather because during the last one it was freezing to see if the battery will actually make it to two hours of flight time and given the new CG and board alignment settings I was also curious to know what distance it will be able to cover in that time. I also wanted to check if INAV is up to the task of a two hour flight because last endurance proved it was not. Flight was going pretty good for a while and then all of a sudden a mid flight disarm happened but since now I I had the plane mechanically trimmed it just entered a gentle spiraling turn. I did have control over the servos while disarmed but not the motor unless I can rearm it first. 
funny thing is, the reason for the disarm was the switch, and I'm pretty certain this is bullshit because I've set up the disarm switch in a way that prevents me from toggling it by accident, and I would have noticed if I had done that. Also, it didn't want to arm right away, so I had to wait a bit before it would accept the new arm command and I resumed the flight. I landed immediately after that because as it stands with these mid-flight disarms etc, I just don't feel comfortable keeping this flight controller on the Nano Talon and risk losing it. I will install the Radio Link Mini Pix I have and let's see how that is going to fare. At least out of experience I can trust a Pix Hawk to have a reliable return to home and not to disarm itself in flight so will give me the peace of mind needed to actually go out and do a long range test of the XM Plus receiver. First on the surgical table for a Pixhawk install is the Believer though, but the Nano Talon would follow shortly so expect an update in the not too distant future, at which point I will also try to eliminate or at least limit the amount of slop in the Nano Talon's control surfaces and see how much that helps with the wobbles. Now if you have liked this video please like, share and subscribe if you haven't already and consider doing the same on Facebook for more regular updates and also consider supporting me on Patreon. If you have any questions leave them in the comments and I will try to answer to the best of my knowledge. All relevant links are in the video description below and using any of them to buy anything from those websites would help support this channel, would allow me to keep doing this and you will have my eternal gratitude. Happy flying to all and until next time.